Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we are tasting something super interesting that Paused Beaver cooked up. Now let's quickly pop over to Paused Beaver. I think he'll cut in just before the still is ready and just give us a little bit more information about the recipe that we're doing. And then when we come back, we'll go over the recipe in more detail and we'll be also be tasting this awesome product. Past Beaver here, now I think Future Beaver should either be very happy with the end result or he should be extremely disappointed. Now the idea here is to make a gin but with a rum base. Now upon doing research when this idea popped into my head I came across the Dominator brand of uh, rum that also does a gin but the gin is aged on wood. Now I've never tasted it personally and it really intrigued me so if you can remember, Still Tech sent us that kit of gin uh, recipes or a little bit of gin infusion tubs that we're gonna now be using the last one we didn't use and that's the spice gin. Now the kettle has enough uh, liquid in it for this amount of juniper and botanicals. So what we're gonna do now is just we're gonna crush it. We're gonna take our gin basket, we're gonna put it in. We finished taking all four shots and heads we put the still back into full reflux now and it's now time to crush the crush up the botanicals and get it into the gin basket. So as you saw there, Paws Beaver spoke about the Dominator brand of rum. Now they make a gin, but the gin is aged in barrels. So it is probably going to be quite different if you're going to try this product at home and not age it. Now this product turned out awesome. We drank it in a couple of cocktails and that was the reason that I created or thought of this mixture. Now, doing a gin with a rum base is not something new. It's just something that I found extremely interesting and I wanted to try it. Now, the rough idea behind it is to use a rum, the sweetness and the caramel and the vanillas in a rum, and then heighten it with the citrus and the other flavors of a gin. I can honestly say the two did pair well together. We did try it in a couple of mojitos that normally only uses a white rum and the mojitos turned out awesome. You get that little hint of the rum and then it hits you with that nice bitter and citrus flavors from the juniper. Before we get too much into the flavors, let's quickly go over the recipe. Now we started with a standard rum recipe. So we wanted to do a light rum and the recipe was inspired by the rum that I did up here where we used the still take it to make a light rum and we tried to make a white rum out of it we failed epically now if you want to check out that video please click the link up here and then you can check out how i failed at making white rum thank you very much for everybody with the suggestions on how to do the white rum we'll definitely get into that the moment we obtain a smaller still like i said the rum kit was used again with five liters of molasses and we also used five kilograms of brown sugar we did invert the brown sugar, so yes, we do use inverted sugar in the recipe. We then added some nutrients, popped in our yeast. We also used the yeast packet from that still takes sense that's already loaded with all the nutrients and everything that you need into the fermenter and we let it ferment out. The whole wash fermented it out in four days. We left it for another week to clarify and all the sediment to drop out. We then put it into the kettle and we got the kettle up to temp. Now, as you saw when past Beaver said we were ready to add the botanicals in, we took the juniper from, or the kit that Stiltec sent us. Thank you very much, Stiltec. Those gins are awesome. We took those um, botanicals, we crushed them up, put them into the gin basket, and then we started taking off hearts. Now, we did take a little bit of a transition cut in between each of these. What I mean by a transition cut is after we took off four shorts and heads, we added the botanicals into the gin basket. Now, because we had the still in full reflux, this means that at the end of the day, we might be getting some funky flavors again. So what I did is I drained the parrot, kept that uh, the product out of the parrot one side, and then I took a little bit more off the still uh, with the botanicals in the gin basket. Just taste it, just to see that we are now completely into hearts. Then we switched over to the big jars and we did a couple of big cuts. We ended up with three liters of product. We then proofed it down to 40%. I 
I left it overnight in the jars in which we proofed it down just to mill out all the flavors. We then went ahead and we bottled the product and we have it here in front of us. Now, as always, the full recipe as well as the description of the recipe will be down in the description box below with the conversion units into metric and imperial. So if you want to try this recipe at home, please click the link or check down in the description below. You'll see the recipe there typed out in full. So without further ado and enough talking, it's time to actually taste the product. Now, first up, this product is not designed to be used neat. Now, this is purely for the tasting. The product was designed, like I said in the beginning of the video, to be used in a cocktail. So the cocktails that you normally would use a white rum or a white rum and gin combination, this is where this product actually shines. So right on the nose, as you come towards the glass, the juniper is the first thing that comes out, that nice bitter citrusy juniper smell. As you put your nose in there and you start smelling a little bit more and you work your way past the juniper, you start getting into those nice vanilla and caramel notes that the molasses brings to the table. So you get that nice and light rum flavor as well as the nice juniper flavors in the beginning. Now this product was distilled through our still at the back here. We did run all six plate. We took it off at 92%, ensuring that we have a nice clean product going through the botanicals. We didn't want too much contamination between the rum and the, jun and the juniper or the gin. We actually wanted a nice balance between, between the two and I do believe it worked. Now it's time for a taste. So on the taste, the first thing that hits you, it is sweet. Almost as if we added sugar into this and we didn't. It is nice and sweet on the palate. Next thing that comes in is that beautiful juniper flavors. And then right at the end, those caramel and vanilla notes come through from the molasses. And it ends up with that aniseed kind of licorice tasting trademark of a gin and just finishes beautifully. But like I said, designed to go into a cocktail and it does really work in a cocktail. Now I'm super happy with this product. I'll definitely be experimenting more with this product to ensure that I get a nice balance. If I'm going to do this recipe again, what I'll do is I'll maybe increase the botanical impact and try and keep the rum impact the same and then do another recipe with more of a rum impact, meaning either do a stronger rum wash with more molasses and less sugar because at this time it was 50-50, five liters of molasses and five kilograms of sugar. Maybe play with that ratio up until I get a product that is to my liking. But this is currently, for a first attempt, a super awesome product. Now before we end up this video, I just want to thank Stiltek once again for sending the rum kit as well as the gin kits. They came out awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Now, if you want to get your hands on the products, I'll put a link down in the description box below so you can get your hands on any of those products that I used in the video. And as always, if you stuck around this far, thank you very much and have a lack of day. Cheers.